So welcome to Sermon-Based Small Groups. As we get going, there's really a threefold rhythm I want to lean into for this. Um, the water, the promise, and Pentecost. Um, when we talk about the song Oceans, we really lean into the elemental view of, of what we're, when we talk about our faith journey and God and different things, we use the elements not to worship creation, but to recognize even within creation, the majesty of God is revealed in many ways. So um, with Peter walking on the water, we recognize in that act of Peter where he says, if you are the Lord, bid me to come. And Jesus says, come that when he walks out on the water, he sees Jesus, but then when he takes his eyes off Jesus, he sinks. How true of that is life. How true of, the, of our life is that? And then we can look to the promise Jesus made in John 16 uh, at Pentecost, where, or not Pentecost, at the, at the Passover meal where, where he instituted communion. Jesus talked to him about the promised Holy Spirit and he said, it's good that I'm leaving so that I can send you the Holy Spirit. What that tells us is having Jesus right in front of us even the chaos of life can cause us to look away. But when we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, we never lose vision. That is fulfilled on Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. We see Peter stand up into the chaos of Pentecost Sunday morning or Pentecost morning when uh, the Spirit of God came rushing in like wind and he gives this sermon that invites people to come to know God. Where Peter once sunk with Jesus right in front of him, Peter stands tall not in his own power, but in the power of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday. And I think that's true for the church. And I think we're able to stand up and worship God faithfully when we do this, when we do the, um, the act, the art, the, the participant relational aspect of worship. When we worship, we, we really step in and we recognize God's sovereignty over the storms of life, over the situations we face. Our circumstances are not bigger than God. Though they're large, God is over the storms of life. So over the chaos, over the ruin, over whatever's going on. So we look at that and we realize that God gives us, well, he gives us a way forward, a way to live in worship and just take the next step of faith. Faithful obedience because it's our obedience within the storms of life where we're able to testify to the way God worked even through the storms. His faithfulness is seen in how we follow faithfully through the storms of life and him being Lord over all creation. Creation bows its head to its creator and our creator knows our name. So there's, there's hope in that. But then there's also this um, exuberant reality that worship is actually an act of faith. It's faith acted on, vocalized, and lived out. So if everything we do is worship, then everything we do is an act of faith. And when we gather and we worship and we throw our hands up to God and we welcome the Holy Spirit to us, to this place, and we invite the Holy Spirit to fill us, we are made to stand tall in the presence of, um, of what God's called us to face. Maybe we're in a storm of life. We're called to stand up and face it in His power, not ours. Friends, as you uh, turn yourself towards the questions, my hope and prayer is this, that whatever storm you're facing, you remember that God is bigger than the storm you're in. No storm lasts forever and neither do the good days. Storms come and go. God is a constant in our life. And if we are people who understand worship, we understand that no matter the weather, no matter the storms, our call, our opportunity, the high charge of heaven to us is to stand in rapt worship of who God is, not our circumstances. All right, first question. Have you ever been confused by words or expressions in a worship song? And if you have, what was the thing that confused you? Question number two, have you ever been um, out on the water at night, like a big body of water, like Michigan, the ocean, something like that? Because um, if you have, you know how intimidating and how small you can feel on it and how it looks just so overwhelmingly dark and vast. Um, what in your life right now looks like the water that would have been around Peter um, in that night where they were crossing the lake? What is dark, chaotic, cold, endless, or frightening for you.
So Peter sinks right in front of Jesus, with Jesus right in front of him, uh, walking on the lake. And then later, Jesus ascended. Peter became a totally different person after Pentecost. I mean, he was fearlessly preaching the gospel to thousands of people about the work of God from the beginning of Scripture, really, to the death of Christ. What in him changed? Forgive me, I'm going to read this next question so I don't miss anything in it. Empowered by the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, the disciples were dispersed after that day. We know of missionary journeys to Rome, Asia, Africa. Christian tradition places some of the disciples, such as Andrew, as far as modern-day Russia. James, son of Alphaeus, was in Spain. Thomas, to India. And even towards Britain. Uh, clearly, we are. they were all called outside of their normal a uh, sphere of influence in the song Oceans. We sing the phrase, Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. I think the question we want to ask is, have you put borders around how far you'd be willing to go to obey God? Are there any borders where you say, God, you can take me this far, but no farther? So sometimes worship is a testimony. Other times it's a declaration or an expression of faith. And um, it, it really speaks out what we believe, even when we don't feel it. When we're not feeling what we believe, we still believe it. And um, in the devotions this past week, there was an excerpt included uh, from one of the singers from Hillsong who um, was scheduled to record Desert Song that we sang this past Sunday. And um, she wasn't feeling it because just a couple, a month before she had delivered uh, her son, I think his name was Max and he was born prematurely. And though her husband and her prayed for his life, he didn't live. She wasn't feeling it when it was time to sing it. She didn't feel like singing, yet she knew she had to. Actually, I think it's better if we just let her share in her words. Check out this clip. Even when you're singing things that you, you know you know are true, but you might not necessarily fully understand yet, I think that just being able to look at God and, and say things that are true of Him and like declare the Word of God and declare the promises of God, which is that, you know, when I'm in the fire, you know, and when I'm being refined and when I'm in a battle and when the triumph isn't here yet, but it's coming. I think that you look at God and you say, I know this is who you are. And he does get he does get bigger in your life and it takes over the things in you that feel so, you know, shattered and it makes him the focus and it begins to put those things back together. So after hearing that from Jill, do you feel like um, worship can be an expression of your faith even when you're not feeling it? So as a dyslexic, I would like to greet you with the words of Lionel Richie as we go. Hello? <laughs> Get it? Because I'm saying hello, but it's the end and I'm dyslexic. <laughs> no? Anyways, that's the goodbye. Have a great week, guys. <laughs>